Take a seat, Freddy. Nice try, Jason. But there's a new horror icon in town, and his name is... Albert. That's right. Today we're going to take a look at the first entry in the Stocked by My Doctor franchise. Oh dear god. My cup runneth over. When the film opens, we find the good doctor enjoying some complimentary breadsticks at the Olive Garden after being ghosted by the woman he met on eHarmony. Would you like to order an appetizer? I'm expecting a friend. She'll be here any minute. If you need anything else, let me know. Thank you so much. As you'll soon find out, Albert isn't exactly great at picking up on social cues, especially when it comes to women he's creeping on. Where are you? Are you stuck in traffic? Albert, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm not coming. Well, I got us a bottle of Merlot. You said it was your favorite. So. What woman couldn't resist the charm of Albert? <laughs> Jesus. Maybe he should be stalking a therapist, huh? <laughs> After a harrowing PSA on the dangers of texting and driving... Brian, you shouldn't be texting. They want to talk to me about a scholarship. <sighs> Come on, I know I don't like when you do that. Sophie, a high school senior, finds herself under the care of everyone's favorite creepy doctor. Okay, baby, one last question, and this is important. Do you like sushi? <laughs> Me too. When you get well, we'll have some sushi. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's gonna get weird. With a new target in Albert's sights, the women of eHarmony breathe a collective sigh of relief. I'm working. Sure you are, bud. After surgery, Dr. Beck informs Sophie's parents of her condition. Pause and remove glasses for maximum drama. She's gonna be fine. Oh, thank you. When can we see her? Well, we're gonna move her to a private room, so... It shouldn't be long. Excuse me. I need to be somewhere. <sighs> Off to save another life, I presume. Man, maybe that Dr. Beck's not so bad after all. Wait a minute. What is he up to? He's not really gonna... If you ever see this man near the pediatric wing, call the police immediately. <sighs> Looks like Dr. McFeely's gonna need a new set of scrubs. Yuck. Tell the parents they can come in now. <clears throat> Ugh, talk about adding insult to injury, huh? This guy's a real piece of work. After sneaking in one last creepy predatory glare at Sophie, Dr. Beck heads home to take a cold shower. Afterwards, he trolls Bumble for a woman with poor decision-making skills. And then it's right back to the Olive Garden, where even a creep like Dr. Beck feels like family. He still needs to use that Groupon, after all. I'm really glad that you responded to my post. Me too. So far, so good. You know, if this works out between us, I've got this... Uh... Let me show you. Please don't be a pick. I play some Cabo San Lucas. The master bedroom overlooks the Pacific Ocean. I'd love to take you there. That's beautiful. All that must have cost a fortune. Well, I've worked all my life and it's just me, so. You don't say. I can afford it. 
Well, I've never been to Mexico. I've been to Japan. Barbara, part of the reason that I got on this website was so I could meet somebody exciting, somebody like you, and just spoil her rot. <laughs> Old sugar daddy Beck, they call him. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't have to work anymore. You could quit your job. Are you saying what I think you're saying? I thought this through. I know what I want. And when I meet somebody I like, I know it. You can always tell someone likes them when they make this face. Just met. I know, and that's the beauty of it, because I'm ready. I mean, I could retire right now, but... Many people have suggested that he should... ...share my life with someone. Well, I like my teaching job. Oh, you wouldn't have time for a teaching job, not with the kids. Kids. Wow. I know it's a lot to lay on you in the first aid, isn't it? But hey. Ah, uh, a brief glimmer of self-awareness. That's about the most you can ask for from old Albert. You know what, I'm gonna go. Why? What? Did I say something wrong? Are you serious? Please don't go. Please don't go. Please. Works every time. Just tell me what I'm doing wrong. Because I'm obviously doing something terribly wrong. Oof. How much time you got, buddy? We met four hours ago. We had coffee. We spent the afternoon together. But now you want me to bury your children and raise them in a foreign country? You're the doctor, not me, but I think you need to see a therapist. I'm sure Albert's mature enough by this point to accept this assessment. Thank you for the enlightened analysis, you fat ass bitch. Good God, doesn't he know that this is a family establishment? I'll go to Bellevue, and then you can go straight to hell. Real clever. You touch me or call the cops? I don't need to touch you. Wow, he's really gonna resort to the old I'm not touching you tactic. So go ahead, run, I don't care. Good luck getting a boyfriend, because I'm not interested. <sighs> Looks like he's going to be big pimping down in Baja all by his lonesome. The next day at the hospital, Dr. Beck is up to his usual creepy antics once again. Is this going to hurt? A little. Hang on. When Sophie's mom walks in unexpectedly, she gets a pretty good idea of what Albert's bedside manner looks like. Is everything all right? Oh yeah. Her latest cat scan looks really good. She'll be able to go home today. Oh, good. Well, I'll give you ladies some privacy. Bye, Dr. Beck. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mom starts asking the tough questions. What was he doing? Just now? He was just changing my bandage. Was there a female nurse present when he was doing that? Mm, no, should there be? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's fine. Is it? So then, Sophie is released from the hospital. In a couple of weeks, she'll be right back to normal. Hey, I'll be better than normal. I've got a new heart. I'm gonna live forever. I'm not really sure that's how it works, but... <laughs> so anyways, Mom starts to get the sneaking suspicion that something's up with Dr. Beck. I just love you, Dr. Beck. Oh boy, that's going straight into the Albert Beck spank bank. Bye. Bye. We then cut to an episode of Dawson's Creek already in progress. Hey. I emailed you. I called your parents' landline a dozen times. Why won't you talk to me? What am I supposed to say, huh? Sorry? Yeah, that would be pretty much the bare minimum you could do. In need of a shoulder to cry on, Sophie goes to visit her favorite creepy doctor at his McMansion of Horrors. Sophie. I'm sorry. I know it's late. I just really needed to talk to you, and I know that I should have called first. No, really, it's okay. Please, come in. He's just relieved it's not the local teenager spray-painting obscenities on his house again. You have a really nice house. Thank you. Wait till you see the basement. I know this sounds crazy, but... I can't stop thinking about you. I feel the same way. Crazy, I hope. 
And as a surprise to absolutely no one, this all turns out to be part of Albert's sick, perverted fantasy. I guess it was just those damn neighborhood kids again. Dr. Beck, hi. Did you need something? Oh, I just came out to say hi to this young man. I was here the night of his accident, so I just thought I'd come in and see how he was doing. With Sophie's boyfriend still in the way, Albert decides to do a little social engineering. Yeah, he's a real Hannibal Lecter. He's so proud of himself. Meanwhile, Sophie's parents get some more bad news. She may need surgery again. What? Why? There's a slim chance. They don't know yet. But if it does happen, we don't want a new cardiologist at that point. We want someone who understands what's going on with her heart. Don't you agree? All right. We'll stay with him for now, but Jim, if he does anything inappropriate, I swear I am we'll going- switch. I promise. I'd say that's pretty much a foregone conclusion at this point. Might as well get the torch and pitchfork ready. Chase this perverted monster out of town the old-fashioned way. All this creeping around starting to wear him out. Later that night, Dr. Beck decides to break into Sophie's house like he's one of the goddamn wet bandits. He engages in standard perv behavior. Fiddling with dolls, sniffing dirty laundry, stuff like that. After that, he decides to do some Goldilocks roleplay. But the good doctor is almost caught perv-handed when Sophie and her mother arrive home early from their trip to the CVS. And he makes a daring escape. After cowering in the closet for several hours. Banking on their mutual love of dolls, Albert decides to recalibrate and come up with a new plan in order to woo Sophie. And he decides to follow that ass to the mall. How did you know I liked this kind of doll? I didn't. I just saw it and I thought you'd like it. Wow, he's so smooth. I can't accept this. Hey, uh, we're gonna be late, so we should go. Bye. The audience is then treated to yet another embarrassing meltdown from Dr. Beck. After the American Girl doll incident, Sophie's mother becomes increasingly concerned. Dad, you should see the way he looks at me. It's like he's a middle schooler and he wants me to help him lose his virginity. Okay, what do you want me to do? I don't know, literally anything? Yeah, and I think we should get a restraining order. And ruin this guy's career? Oh, God forbid. He's following her in the mall. Well, what, are we gonna wait till he rapes her? I don't want him to be my doctor anymore, Dad. I refuse to let that man touch me again. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, honey. I'll talk to him tomorrow and we'll find out what's going on. Geez, world's greatest dad over here. But Dr. Beck decides to pull a fast one on dear old mom and switches up her medications. God, he's like the MacGyver of perverts. Luckily, Sophie arrives home just in the nick of time to save her mother. With no one to look out for Sophie, Dr. Perv makes his move. And if you thought this movie wasn't convoluted enough already, Dr. Beck actually goes through the trouble to fake Sophie's death. Body burned beyond recognition, but they were able to trace the car back to her family and have now identified her as 18-year-old Sophie Green of Los Angeles. So now I guess Dr. Beck and Sophie will live happily ever after in his creepy McMansion. And Albert can't help but celebrate. But his celebration is cut short when Sophie escapes. Looks like it's time for a good old-fashioned game of Beat the Perv. Sophie, I love you. Oh, uh, 
Let me take care of you. After going full Arnold Palmer on Dr. Beck's ass, Sophie arrives home just in time for her own funeral. Oh, somebody check on Grandma. The police raid Dr. Beck's house, but alas, he's fled like a perv in the night. When we catch up with Dr. Beck, he's big pimping down in Cabo. Hola. Hola. ¿Está listo para ordenar? Lo debía no. Estoy esperando a alguien. I'll bet he's regretting buying that Spanish fly from the gas station right about now. She'll be here any minute. Wow. You'd think a few whacks to the head with a golf club would really mellow a guy out, but I suppose Albert will never learn. Well, that's it for today, guys. You can stalk me in the comments section anytime. Good luck getting a boyfriend, because I'm not interested!